Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about blood sugars and insulin. And these are some things that maybe you've heard about before, maybe you know a little bit about them, and you've probably heard like a little bit here and a little bit there, and you've kind of got this maybe vague picture of how these things impact your health. What I want to do for you today is to give you more of a concrete understanding. I want to solidify any gaps that you may have in your understanding here. And I want to leave you with three practical takeaways so you can actually do something about this. And and don't worry, it's not going to be things that are like too hard for you to do. You know, it's not going to be, oh, you just never, you can never eat ice cream ever again. You know, it, it, these are actually like realistic things that scientifically make sense. I'm going to help you understand why they make sense and, and what they actually do and how they impact your, your blood sugars and your, and your insulin. So first of all, who, who, who is this for and why should you really care? So this is for anyone that has diabetes, pre-diabetes, has, uh, de so in their testing, they're having like decreased insulin sensitivity or they've got blood sugar dysregulation. So this could be like if you've got high blood glucose when you get your blood tests done, or you've got a high HbA1c, that's more of like a, an indicator of long-term blood sugar dysregulation. This is also really helpful if you have PCOS or you've got any other diseases that are associated with your body losing insulin sensitivity or losing its ability to maintain its blood sugars. So this is also relevant for things like adrenal fatigue as well, because that's something that's really connected with uh, blood sugar instabilities. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to try and get more stable blood sugars. That's, that's basically what we're going to be trying to do here. So we're trying to reduce the spikes, we're going to try and reduce the peaks, and we're going to try and reduce the dips as well. And we're going to try and have more stability. And this is like stability is balance, balance is health. And that's what we're going to do. So why is it why is it bad when we have blood sugar spikes? So whenever we eat something that has a very high glycemic load, so an example of this would be like, if you drink like a can of Coke, or if you were to eat something that is very high in sugars, that is going to absorb into your bloodstream very, very quickly. And what's going to happen is your blood sugars spike up very, very high, very, very fast. So your blood sugars go from like the healthy range where they're at and they go really, really high, really, really quick. And your blood sugars actually have a, a very, a kind of a tight band of an optimal range. So there's like this ideal range that they want to stay. When they start to creep towards the upper limit of that, your body is like, oh, we need to do something about this. Let's release some insulin. And the insulin gets released. And what insulin does is it tells all of this sugar that's now entering your blood, it kind of tells the cells to take this, this sugar out of the blood and to bring that, that insulin. The, the insulin tells the cells to take this sugar inside of themselves. So then your, your cells have sugar and they can use this sugar as, as energy. This, this process is normal and this process is fine. You're always going to have an insulin spike whenever you eat, even if you don't eat any carbs at all. Even if you eat a completely keto meal, you will still have a blood sugar spike. It still happens. It, you don't ever want to get rid of them. Like This is how your body functions. What's bad is when the spikes are very, very high and you're doing it all the time. So it's like big spike, crash, big spike, crash, big spike, crash. That's what we're trying to avoid. That's what we don't want. That causes oxidative damage. That causes aging. So that causes your, your body to basically oxidize. It causes your body to, to basically to age. So it, it, your, your body is going to get older than it actually is, than its, than its biological age. It, it tires the body out. And again, that's one reason that fasting can be really helpful. You're doing the complete opposite. And everybody knows fasting is a really good anti-aging modality. Maybe we're going to talk about that later. Maybe as a bonus tip. But we'll come back to that. So we want to reduce the impact of the food that we're eating on our blood sugars. So we need, it's not just about not eating sugar. I mean, you can, you can reduce your sugar intake. So like a low carb diet, for example, one of the reasons that it works effectively is it helps you to control your blood sugars. But this isn't the only way to do it. There are other ways you can do this without restricting your diet so much because I mean, I mean, let, honestly, let's be real. Like, who doesn't like bread? Who doesn't like pasta and pizza and ice cream and like stuff with sugar in? It? Like, it, it's nice. You like it, right? And and that's okay. But we have to learn how to use these foods in a healthy way, and we can do that by implementing some of these changes that I want to share with you today. So, if we can get these blood sugars a little bit more controlled, what could we expect to see? 
more stable energy throughout the day, particularly after meals. If you're someone that has a big meal and then afterwards you feel like you have to have a nap, you have to have a food coma, that's, a, that's probably a blood sugar problem. If you find that you go without having food for a certain period of time, you get like hangry. You know, you're having these blood sugar crashes. You just, you're like, oh, you're like frantic. Again, that's blood sugar dysregulation. If you find that having, um, so like some, like some sweets or like something that's more refined and you, you have it and it's like, instead of getting tired, you get like almost like hyper, almost like manic. That's also a sign of blood sugar dysregulation. What we want is you to eat food and then for you to just feel normal, energized, but also calm, not in this like frantic, crazy hyper energy. Cause that hyper energy, you're going to burn through it and then you're going to be crashing and you're going to be a do, 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 up and down. And that's very, very bad. So the first thing that we can do here is we can use vinegar before we eat. And this is really interesting. I learned about this through a lady known as the glucose goddess. You can have a look on Instagram. She's got some really cool posts. Like she, 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 show, she talks about some of the things we're going to talk about today. And you can see the effect as she's got like a blood glucose monitor and she shows how these things work. So if you, if you like what I'm talking about today and it resonates with you, and you feel like you want to take it a step further, go and check out her work. It's really, really cool. She's um, She's got some really good stuff and she explains it in a very simple way as well. I'm just trying to spread the word a little bit because it's, it's an important thing to, to understand. So the reason that this works is, is twofold. So the vinegar, and this is all vinegars. So I personally really like apple cider vinegar. I like the taste and there's a lot of other health benefits as well. You know, you've got the malic acid in there, you've got probiotics, you've got enzymes, you've got a lot of different things. But for this benefit, it's actually the acetic acid that's in the vinegar. And this is in all vinegars. So this is in rice wine vinegar. This is in balsamic vinegar. This is in all vinegars. Whatever vinegar you like, you can use this, it works. And what you'd be wanting to do would be take about a tablespoon just before you have your meal. So as early as 15 minutes if you're more stable, but if your blood sugars do fluctuate a little bit, ideally like immediately before you have a meal. And what this is gonna do is, is, is twofold. So first of all, it's gonna reduce the uptake of these sugars into your bloodstream. It reduces the speed. So instead of your all of these sugars absorbing and your blood sugars just going boom, really high, it brings them in more slowly. So your body can adjust and it can adapt to this uh, increase in blood sugar it's, it's slower. It helps your body manage it. But secondly, and this is what I think is the most interesting, is it actually encourages the body to start taking sugars from the blood without insulin. So you don't actually need to have this insulin release for the for the for the cells to start soaking the the sugars out of the out of the blood. So what's happening then is when you then eat the eat the meal and you have this blood sugar levels increasing your body is already trying to take these sugars from the bloodstream, which means the body is like, okay, well, these sugars, yes, they're coming up, but they're, they're already, the, the cells are already pulling out very effectively. So it either doesn't trigger a response, so there's no insulin, or the insulin um, that is secreted is less. And there's, it's pretty remarkable. You're looking at like a 30% a reduction in a blood sugar spike, if just, just using a tablespoon of vinegar before, before a meal. That's it, only change. It's, it's insane, like it's crazy. Reducing that by 30%, that's basically gonna mean it's gonna change those symptoms of blood sugar dysregulation by 30%. So if I said by having one tablespoon of vinegar before you, you eat whatever food you would normally be eating, even if it's not the most healthy food, you know? I love to go for a pizza every now and then. So like before you had the pizza, you have one tablespoon of vinegar and afterwards you're 30% less tired and you, and you feel better, you're 30% less brain fog you've got 30% less oxidative damage and your body is able to function better. Like you're helping your body adapt to the stress of this blood sugar dysregulation. You will feel it. Imagine feeling 30% better just, just by having some vinegar before your meal. Like crazy, insane, super, super useful um, technique. And it's so easy, that's why I really, really like it. If it's not handy for you to have vinegar, so like say you're, you're out at a restaurant, you can ask for, for vinegar and they, they will probably give it to you but you can also get vinegar gummies. So these are like, you can either get like uh, capsules with like as a, as a, maybe like an apple cider vinegar supplement, or you can get these little gummies that have apple cider vinegar in them. This, this will work. This has got the acetic acid in it. So you can bring these with you and you can eat out and they're like super convenient and a, a really easy way to just 
support your body in so many different ways, but particularly from this blood sugar perspective. So the second change that you can implement would be to increase the fiber intake just before you have whatever it is that's gonna impact your blood sugars. So this could be a lot of different things, but generally fiber, you're thinking vegetables. So this could be a small salad. This could be like a little, like, and this doesn't even have to be a lot. This could be like a little bowl of soup. You know, I'm talking like 10 to 15 tablespoons of soup, you know, small bowl of soup, significant impact on blood sugars. This can be like a small salad. This could even be like five slices of, of cucumber or like three or four lettuce leaves. And bonus points if you put vinegar on them as well, you know, then you're getting a double whammy, you're combining both of these. If you look in the countries where, like, so for example, like, let's take pizza and pasta, you know, these come from Italy. Whenever you order these things, they come with a salad before the, before the pasta or the, the pizza is, is like brought to your table. It comes with a salad that has vinegar on it. It's like these cultures knew this, like they knew that the people that ate these foods felt better if they had these things beforehand and that's because it really helps with with your it helps your body to process this it helps your body to uh, manage this this change and fluctuation in, in blood sugars so again you still get to eat pasta and you still get to have pizza like, amazing all you do is you have some form of vegetables before it be it a small soup a little salad even like some tomatoes half an avocado just something and you combine that with vinegar amazing if you can't do vinegar just do the salad if you can't do the salad just do the vinegar if you can't do either then there's still things that we can talk about so final tip would be if you are going to have something that is that has a particularly high glycemic load so like if you're going to have ice cream or you're going to have a dessert or you're going to have something that has a lot of refined sugar have it at the end of the meal so you've had this this food that's already filled you up and provided some bulk so when you have this refined sugar afterwards it is going to delay how quickly these sugars are absorbing into your into your blood and they're going to reduce the impact of these sugars on your 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 insulin response so with these three simple changes vinegar before the food some kind of fiber be it a salad a soup um, it could even be like hummus it could be it could be anything as long as there's some fiber content in there and finally, if you if you are going to have something that is going to spike your blood sugars, a can of Coke, um, some ice cream, something, have it at the end of the meal, especially if you've done these other two things first. It's going to reduce the negative impacts by like 50 to 60 percent, you know, and you should be able to eat foods that you that you love and that you enjoy. You just have to learn how the body works and how you can help your body handle it. And this is a, a way where you can take a lot of these negatives out and you can make these way more healthy foods for you and you can still enjoy them we're just understanding how they impact your body and working to support your body in processing and handling these foods so i hope you found this really helpful as i said if you have any questions i'm more than happy to answer them but i would suggest you check out the glucose goddess she's a really she's really got some good content on this and she goes into it in more detail but this is something that's too important not for me to talk about but it's definitely not my area of expertise I would love for you to check out her content. It's really, really cool. I've had a really good time like reading her books, looking at her posts. My wife has been really like interested in these things and they've been really, really helpful for her. So if you like it, definitely check it out. There's some really, really golden info there, especially if you have some kind of blood sugar dysregulation problem. I hope you found the video really helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.